So let's go through a couple of things that's going to really illustrate some of what I'm talking about. One of the things we need to remember is that when I talk about cognitive processes and I talk about all of these things and how we process information, it really is influenced by various things in the environment and within ourselves. So one of the things that we, we find is that our perception, how we perceive things, is biased by experience. So I'm going to give you a little scenario. And by the way, anyone who has seen this before, you are not allowed to answer. All right, so here's the scenario. You work at a university, right? You are in administration. And it just so happens that you are part of a team that's helping design the expansion of the university. Kind of like what's happening at FIU, where we have a lot of buildings going up, right? So you're in a meeting with a real estate manager at the university to discuss adding five new buildings to the campus. So the manager goes and shows you this map. Now tell me what you see. The top view of the buildings. OK, don't say that yet. Anyone else? Can, any, can everyone see the top view of the buildings? Yes. yes. All right, here's another scenario. Same image. All right, now you are in charge of outreach for the university. And as part of the outreach, you are going to meet with the advertising manager because you're trying to come up with a new campaign to get more and better students to apply to the university. And the manager shows you a sketch of an ad that contains one word. Now what do you see? Life. All right, does everyone see life? Yes. Now go back and try to see the buildings. Where's life? I don't, far I don't see it. Far. Oh, you don't see life? Don't see look at the white. Look at the white. Okay, look at the white. Let me see if you see my mouse. So L right here. I. Yeah, you look at the white and it pops out. Can everyone see it now? Yeah. Now, who can go back and see the buildings really easily? Really easily? You still don't see life? <laughs> Okay, so here's the L. Here's the L. Here, oh, okay. Here's the I. <laughs> see, I told you I, I will jump around and embarrass myself in class to make you happy. It's actually pretty easy. All I have to do is like just position my eyes in like a different location. I can see the buildings again. And then move it back up and I see the white. Oh, so if you look kind of to the side. Not really. It's no. like more like an up and down type. Like an up and down. So like side to side, then the, I can't help but see the word. But if I'm looking at one building in particular, yeah. then the other yeah. ones kind of fall into view. But mm -hmm. if I move sideways, then life pops right back up. Yeah. Okay, usually with most people, once they see life, you have to work to see the buildings again. Because I mean, you can do it. I mean, I can, I can still do it if I try. Except I look at it now, and I'm like, OK, it says life. But you know, you see a lot of. Uh, but, you know, a lot of images that are very similar to this. What you tend to see first depends on your experience. Right now that you have experienced life, you're going to see life. Okay, again, anyone who has seen this before, you are not allowed to say anything yet. What do you see when you look at this? So we have a lot of different interpretations. Did anyone at first just see a bunch of dots? <laughs> Boy, you guys are good. Usually people first they see the dots and then and you and a lot of times it's just the first few seconds, a bunch of dots, and then like, oh, I start seeing something. So some of you are seeing grass. Some of you saw the dog. Some of you see it as snow. There's, someone sees, what, the, the tree? What else do you see? Anything else? Yes. That black circle thing to me looked like a pond when I first saw it. And it was kind of like a grassy area, and then, or like a woodland, and then a pond. All right, so if you look, yeah, so that could, that could be a pond instead of a tree. Right? It depends on 
our experience. It depends on what we happen to be more likely to think of when we are relating these things together. Now, is there anyone who doesn't see the dog and the tree or the pond or the grass or the snow? OK, so one person. So let me try to point it out. OK, so the dog is right here. Right? So here's the head, the ears, the body. It has legs. Let me see the back legs. Did that help? Yes? yes? All right, now, now that you see all of these things, I want you to go back and only see the dots and not interpret it as anything. I can't. I never saw the dots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> you never saw the dots, so you can do it. Yeah, so this one, it's even harder. I cannot look at this without seeing the dog because I've looked at it so many times. Right, so it's really difficult to go back and not now see what we have interpreted. Because one of the things that we have a tendency to do is we look for patterns in things. It is a natural inclination. How many of you remember the, uh, what was it, the face of Jesus and the toast? <laughs> that sold on eBay for like tens of thousands of dollars. Anyone? I know some of you do because you're laughing. Is there anyone who doesn't know that? Okay, what about, um, let me see, what was one, another one? The um, uh, St. Mary, or, you know, Mary, mother of Jesus in the, in the skyscraper, in the, the water reflection on the skyscraper. Did you guys see that? That was a little more recent. Oh, a Jesus potato. <laughs> Those sorts of things. Why is it that people interpret things that way? Well, because... We look for patterns. Now, you take someone who does not have a, say, a Catholic background, for example, and you show them that skyscraper with the Mary, Mother of Jesus, do you think they're going to see Mary, Mother of Jesus? Yeah, probably not. They're going to be looking at him like, um, yeah, no. Oh, wait, here's a picture. Let me show you. Oh, yeah, maybe. All right, so we have a tendency to look for patterns. Now. Unfortunately, you cannot go out and make your own toast these days and put it on eBay because too many people started doing that. And no one will buy it anymore. But that's why we want to look at how we perceive things, not just what comes into our mind, but how do we interpret it. All right, I want you to read this. New vaccine contains rabies. And I want you to tell me what it means. A little louder. So there's a new vaccine that contains rabies in it. Any other possible interpretations? It has contained a disease. Right, so what I think all three of you are saying was that, well, this new vaccine is stopping the spread of Rabies. Anyone else? Sometimes I have real creative types. I usually focus on the two, but in case someone else has something really interesting. Anyone else? No? All right, so which is correct? It depends on the, yeah, it depends on the situation, right? So if the area you, you live in has a widespread problem with rabies, you are more likely to think that, oh, here's a newspaper article that's saying this new vaccine is going to help contain the rabies. It's going to help keep it from spreading. Unless, no, unless really. the vaccine is what started spreading yeah. the rabies. Unless the vaccine is what started spreading the rabies. That's very true. Yeah. I love having brilliant students. Another option. You love your pets and want to ensure they're vaccinated, and you know people who have had bad experience in the past with vaccine quality. Now, how are you interpreting it? Yeah, that it, has, that it has the rabies virus. And like, I'm not sure I want that. So it really depends on what your experience is. And it's not just long-term experience. It can be the particular situation at a particular moment.